I'm such an incredibly stupidly sensitive person that everything that happens to me, I experience it really intensely. I feel everything very deeply. And when you feel things deeply and you think about things a lot and you think about how you feel, you learn a lot about yourself. And when you know yourself, you know life. Fiona Apple was born into an artistic family. Her father was an actor and her mother was a singer and a dancer. Fiona's parents met when they performed together in the same musical. They had two daughters, but never married. They split up when Fiona was only four. She turned to music and writing at a young age. She began taking piano lessons at eight and writing her own compositions and scores by 11. I would write scores to chase scenes in National Geographic Explorer series. You know, like I would see uh, a something chasing a something, you know, a lion chasing an impala and the impala with those gorgeous jumps, I remember, you know, and I would go into my room and try to make the jump happen on the piano. Fiona had a hard time at school. She was oftentimes teased by her classmates who would call her a dog. Things got bad in fifth grade when Fiona confessed to her friend that she was going to kill herself and take her older sister Amber with her. Fiona was taken for a psychiatric evaluation and it was concluded that she had obvious signs of depression and antisocial behavior. The situation at home was not perfect too. Fiona would get into the arguments with her parents. She felt misunderstood and her parents felt like she was manipulative. To express her side and opinion, Fiona would write letters. She explained, quote, I would love the way that it felt to have your side of an argument right here in front of you. If I wrote a letter, I didn't even need to win an argument." End quote. At age 12, Fiona was sexually assaulted outside her mother's New York apartment after walking home from school. The song Silent Girl, which is included on Fiona's first album, Title, is partly an emotional account of that experience. But it washed me sure And it took my In 1996 interview, she said, quote, Silent Girl is complicated for me. It's about a lot of things. I went through a really hard time when I was a very, very cold person. I didn't like to be near people. When I was 12, I was raped by a stranger. And that's what this song is basically about. Because I felt like everybody in my life thought there was something wrong with me. And it was just my wondering, was that what changed me? I used to be a light-hearted person, and I am a light-hearted person, but everyone looks at me and they think I'm really serious and depressed and sullen. Do I come off that way because of this experience? It was something that caused me a lot of pain, and I just felt like, is that why I'm being misunderstood? So that's when it started getting bad, when people started assuming that things were bad and started labeling me as a sick person." End quote. Another song, The Child is Gone, can be considered an extension of Sullen Girl, in a way, as it examines the loss of innocence and coming of age. However, Fiona has never written a song that is fully about her assault. Quote, It doesn't get into the writing. It's a boring pain. It's such a fucking old pain that, you know, there's nothing poetic about it. End quote. The only reason Fiona mentioned what truly happened to her to an interviewer was because she didn't want it to seem like something she should be ashamed of. From that point on, though, interviewers would bring up this subject pretty often. After this traumatic experience, Fiona began attending self-defense classes and eventually at 16 she moved to Los Angeles to live with her dad because she felt safer there. School was still a struggle and the overwhelming question of what to do with one's life after it was getting more prominent. Fiona felt she couldn't do anything else with her life except make music. And that's what she decided to put her energy into. Fiona made a three-song demo, which caught the attention of a record producer, Andrew Slater, at Sony Music, who signed her to a record deal. So we made up our first batch of tapes with 78 tapes, and I thought that was a ridiculous amount of tapes to make up because I just wasn't willing to talk to that many people about my music. Um, so you still have the creative tapes, probably. I still have 77 of them yeah. <laughs> because I gave one to my friend, and she was babysitting for Catherine Schenker, who is a, is a uh, publicist, and uh, she gave it to her. And Kathy had a party, and Andy went to the party and called me up. Producers told Fiona that she had to come up with a stage name, because her given name was too long. Her mom suggested that her stage name be Fiona Lone, because she was a loner. Fiona herself wanted a completely new name, but when the contract arrived, she was listed as Fiona Apple, so she went with it. I remember meeting people from Sony and being like, and them being like, what do you want your name to be? And I was like, I, not Fiona Apple. Not Fiona Apple. It's too obvious. <laughs> Fiona's first album came out in 1996 and was called Tidal, the word that perfectly captured the wave of emotions, highs and lows Fiona was experiencing leading up to the production of the album. She was only 18 and had never performed on stage before. I never thought 
that there was much point in having a title to an album anyway, just because I never, there was not like a theme to my album. It was just kind of a bunch of songs that I threw together. So it was kind of like making fun of the fact that it was supposed to be title, and I was going to call it title. And also then it turned into just being like about the fact that the whole album is just kind of up and down and all the, you know, roller coaster of me and my sick emotional, you know, weirdness and all that. Title, a mix of jazz, alternative rock and pop, was well received by the critics. It made Fiona a hot new thing almost immediately. Within a year, she became one of the most famous women in the industry. The album was compared to the work of singers like Alanis Morissette and Tori Amos due to its mature content. At the same time, some people really didn't believe that a teenager could write such sensual lyrics and be so introspective, self-aware and brutally honest. Some guy in Europe actually told me that he thought that I had made up everything that I had written about because he didn't think that I could have experienced that much being 19, and it just makes you kind of feel like, damn, there's a big generation gap. Shadow Boxer was Apple's first single. The song is about an inconsistent lover who comes in and out of your life and plays with your feelings. However, you still find yourself wanting to be with them. What a cunning way to condescend Once my lover and now the video for this single is shot entirely in black and white. There is no particular plot. Fiona is in the recording studio. There are scenes of her playing the piano and singing in front of a microphone with her headphones on. The lyrics for the second single, Sleep to Dream, Fiona wrote when she was 14. I started writing it because uh, my first boyfriend was, um, I was 14 and he was 18, and 18 year old guys, as we were saying before. A jerk. Yeah. So, um, and I was just like really insecure and I couldn't defend myself to him, so I just kind of went back and did it on paper. The video that features Fiona singing in different rooms in the apartment while suffering from insomnia earned her the MTV Video Music Award for Best New Artist in 1997. Fiona's unscripted acceptance speech that day went down in pop history as one of the most memorable moments, and it completely changed the trajectory of her career. Everybody out there that's watching, everybody that's watching this world, this world is bullshit. And you shouldn't model your life. Wait a second. You shouldn't model your life about what you think that we think is cool and what we're wearing and what we're saying and everything. Go with yourself. The message really didn't seem that controversial. Be yourself, choose you, embrace everything that is you. Don't idolize and don't compare yourself to people you see on TV or social media, if you talk about nowadays. Fiona wasn't throwing shade at anyone, didn't name names, but she got a lot of crap because of it. At that time, Fiona wrote on her website, quote, When I won, I felt like a sellout. I felt that I deserved recognition, but the recognition I was getting was for the wrong reasons. I felt that now, in the blink of an eye, all of those people who didn't give a fuck who I was or what I thought were now all at once just humoring, appeasing me, and not because of my talent, but instead because of the fact that somehow, with the help of my record company and my makeup artist, my stylist and my press, I had successfully created the illusion that I was perfect and pretty and rich, and therefore living a higher quality of life. I had saved myself from misfit status, but I'd betrayed my own kind by becoming a paper doll in order to be accepted. End quote. As Fiona said in an interview with Rolling Stone in 1998, quote, I went from being tragic waif ethereal victim to being Brad Beach loose cannon. I just had something in my mind and I just said it. And that's really the foreshadowing of my entire career and my entire life. When I have something to say, I'll say it. End quote. The press and the critics that were grown as adults decided to bully a teenager. They mocked her, called her speech lame and absurd, and labeled Fiona as a bratty and grateful freak and hypocrite. The hypocrisy was related to her biggest hit, the third single, Criminal, in particular the music video for this song. Most of the songs on Tidal were written by the time Fiona was 16, but as she was finishing up her first album, producers asked her for a more obvious hit. In her own words, she wrote Criminal in 45 minutes when everyone else went to lunch. This is a song about feeling guilty and regretful for using your sexuality to get what you want. The video for the song was directed by Mark Romanek, one of the most famous music video directors. The video shows Fiona in a 70s style house after a night of partying with other kids. She's in her underwear most of the time. She's stripping in the kitchen at one point. She's lying on the floor surrounded by other half-naked bodies. She's in bed with a man. The overall style makes it look like a homemade video of a sexual nature that you're not supposed to see. There were a couple of accusations against the music video and Fiona herself. Number one that it promoted heroin chic, the fashion style that was popular in the 90s. Extremely thin bodies, pale skin, dark circles. And number two, because Fiona was only 18, 
People basically considered the video to be near child porn. At first, Fiona tried to explain the idea behind the video and defend it. I'm treating the audience that is watching this video the same way that the character in this song treats the man. Look at me, look how pretty I am. I'm not gonna, I don't have to give you anything else because look how pretty I am and look how successful I can be. As I've said, people were making parodies of both Fiona's music videos. Though I ride half nakedly, it's not at all what it seems. Just a piece of jailbait, baby, that's all you see. And her VMA acceptance speech. In 1997, a comedian, Janine Garofalo, recorded her parody of Fiona called Reading from the Book of Apple. Quote, This world is bullshit. And you shouldn't model, wait a second, you shouldn't model your life about what you think that we think is cool. Even though I have an eating disorder, and I have somehow sold out to the patriarchy in this culture that says that lean is better. Even though I have done that, and I have done a video wherein I wear underwear so that you young girls out there can covet and feel bad about what you have and how thin you're not. The point is, I have done it. I am lean. That's why I did succeed sooner than maybe other musicians who maybe were better songwriters, I don't know, better lyricists, better vocalists. I can't say that, but I do know this. This world is bullshit. Did I say that this world was bullshit? Because it is. End quote. Fiona listened to this recording during her 1998 Rolling Stone interview. She got really upset and as a response said this, quote, Since that video was made, I've gained about 20 pounds on purpose so that people can see me like that. I know what I'm doing, bitch. I'm going to get bigger and bigger, and the girls are going to see that I don't care. Of course I have an eating disorder. Every girl in fucking America has an eating disorder. Janine Garofalo has an eating disorder, and that's why she's upset. Every girl has an eating disorder because of videos like that. Exactly, yes. But that's exactly what the video is about. When I say, I've been a bad, bad girl. I've been careless with a delicate man. Well, in a way, I've been careless with a delicate audience, and I've gotten success that way. And I've lived in my ego that way, and I feel bad about it. And that's what the song's about. And therefore, that's what the video looks like. End quote. A lot of people focused their attention on the way Fiona looked and how skinny she was, without really thinking that there might be a reason, and it's not just for the aesthetics. Quote, for me, it wasn't about getting thin. It was about getting rid of the bait that was attached to my body. A lot of it came from the self-loathing that came from being raped at the point of developing my voluptuousness. I just thought that if you had a body and if you had anything on you that could be grabbed, it would be grabbed. So I did purposely get rid of it. End quote. In the following years, Fiona would express how uncomfortable she felt about this music video, that it was cheesy and she didn't look like herself. During a 1999 interview with the Washington Post, Fiona said, quote, I had qualms when it was being made, but I could not admit it to myself. I'd done two videos and it wasn't satisfying. Everybody knew they could get a lot more from me. And it came to me as, everything could be so great if you did this with Mark Romanek. He gets his videos played on MTV. And I thought, yeah, I'll get my video played, end quote. It was nothing against Mark and it was nothing against the art of the video. I got so much shit for it. And, you know, all the people that are there during the video telling you how great it is, they're not there anymore. So then you have all these people that are there going, you sell out, you slut, you, ha you know. Despite having so many controversies around it, the song Criminal helped Fiona get her first Grammy Award in 1998. There was one music video that came before Criminal, and it was the video for the track The First Taste a song about longing for another person. The video was never released in the US, so not a lot of people saw it, but it's kind of similar to the vibes of the criminal video. Fiona looks like a magic nymph walking around people who are partying in the house. It seems like she's making them fall in love. You see a diverse group of people, interracial and queer couples. Never is a Promise was the final promotional single for the album title. This is the song that helped Fiona get a record deal since it was included in her three-song demo tape. The only thing that was added to Fiona's original demo that was focused on her piano and vocals was the string quartet. Fiona wrote Never is a Promise when she was 16, and through the song she expresses what it's like to be betrayed and let down by a person you trusted. But never is a promise and you can't afford to lie. In the music video, Fiona is floating against the background of a blurry night city, which really intensifies the pain of loneliness, but at the end, Fiona goes towards the light, hoping for inner peace. After title, Fiona worked on two covers that were featured on the soundtrack for the movie Pleasantville. 
the Beatles' song Across the Universe, and Percy Mayfield's song Please Send Me Someone to Love. The black and white video for the song Across the Universe was directed by Paul Thomas Anderson, whom Fiona was dating at the time and who directed all her subsequent music videos. The video shows dreamy Fiona floating amid the chaos at the diner that is being ripped apart by writing people. In 1999, Fiona released her second album with a pretty long title that was shortened to When the Pawn. It received a Grammy Award nomination for Best Alternative Album. When the pawn hits the conflicts, he thinks like a king. What he knows throws the blows when he goes to the fight. And he'll win the whole thing before he enters the ring. There's no body to batter when your mind is your might. So when you go solo, you hold your own hand and remember that depth is the greatest of heights. And if you know where you stand, then you know where to land. And if you fall, it won't matter because you know that you're right. The title became Fiona's response to Spin magazine cover story about her in 1997, in which at one point during a photo shoot, she was caught saying, there is no hope for women. Fiona believed that she was painted as a self-absorbed drama queen. Quote, I was crying and I didn't know how to make myself go on, make myself feel like it was all going to be okay. End quote. So Fiona decided to write a self-motivational poem. When the Pawn was considered to be a more mature work compared to Tidal that embodied the teenage angst. On this album, Fiona truly embraced her messy nature, her craziness, basically everything people labeled her as. The lead single, Fast As You Can, warns any person who wants to be with Fiona to just run. Fast as you can, baby. The music video was directed by Paul Thomas Anderson again. Fiona is seen singing in different places, in the street, at a subway station and on a subway train. Fiona said at the time, quote, Paul is going to do all my videos from now on. We used all the people from his movie crew and it's all really fun. I don't have to wear any makeup or anybody else's clothes, end quote. The second single called Limp tells the story of an emotionally abusive relationship filled with gaslighting and manipulation. You wanna make me sick in the video Fiona wakes up in the middle of the night, you can see a man sleeping next to her. Very likely it's the man she's singing to and about. She puts on red lipstick and a suit dress and looks like she's ready for revenge. This is a good rage anthem. The final single, Paperback, was inspired by a pretty comical incident that happened during the making of the first album. Fiona was in her father's car looking out of the window when suddenly she saw a white dove or so she thought. The quote-unquote dove started falling and it turned out to be just a plastic bag. At the time, in Fiona's own words, she was miserable and she thought a white dove was a good omen. But life sometimes disappoints. That's what this song is about. There are a lot of well-known lines from this song. The most infamous one being hunger hurts but starving works. That became widespread in online pro-eating disorder communities. In the video that pays homage to 1940s musical numbers, Fiona, who is wearing a classic red dress, dances with 20 teenage boys as she sings I thought he was a man, but he was just a little boy. In the year 2000, Fiona had a meltdown on stage after performing for 40 minutes that had people talking again. Fiona broke down in tears and left the stage due to sound problems. She later wrote an apology on her website, quote, I'm so fucking sorry that I don't have whatever it takes to be professional in a situation like that. I feel like I let everyone down and made a fool of myself in front of everyone I respect. But I don't know what else I could have done." End quote. Since then, Fiona has opened up many times about that time in her life. Her past with drugs and alcohol and her issues with depression, self-harm and OCD. Short answer is that I'm a human being and I was reacting to life and overwhelmed and that I just, you know, couldn't handle it. After completing the tour for her second album, Fiona took a hiatus to get herself together. She also contemplated retiring from music in general. Quote, The first couple of years I didn't have anything left in me to write about. That was a good thing because it meant I'd done my job on the last batch of songs. I wasn't trying to write. I just figured if the songs came to me, they came to me, and if not, oh well, it's been fun." End quote. Somewhere during this time, Fiona collaborated with Johnny Cash a couple of times. Their cover, Bridge Over Troubled Water, was nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Country Collaboration with Vocals. Six years passed before Fiona got her third album out, Extraordinary Machine and it barely made it to release due to certain disagreements and issues between Fiona and the record label. At one point, the first version of the album got leaked online. Fiona was not happy with how the production was going and that Sony demanded more control of the whole process. She wanted to re-record the songs and do everything the way she always did. 
The whole mess made a lot of fans really upset, and they created a website called Free Fiona. They started sending um, apples to the executives at Sony. I don't really even know exactly the extent of what they did. They did a protest outside of Sony, I know that, because I was in New York when that happened. And basically, they just started creating a lot of heat. Extraordinary Machine came out in 2005 and was named Album of the Year. Since Fiona is not a fan of photo shoots, she decided to take photos of a flower growing at her house. On the inside cover, this flower is fully bloomed. The only song that didn't get leaked onto the internet was Parting Gift, recorded on the first take. Parting Gift is my, is my love letter to all of the men that I've known. The music video was directed by Fiona's half-brother, and it's very simple. Fiona is just performing, playing on the piano and singing. The music video for the second single, Oh Sailor, is a long-lost sister of Paperback to Me. Fiona is again transported back in time, into the halls of a ghost ship, where she is roaming around wearing a beige silk gown. Fiona Apple's clip for Not About Love, a turbulent song with a lot of tempo changes, took one day to shoot and was never intended to be a proper music video. It features Fiona and comedian Zach Galifianakis as a couple going through a rough patch in their relationship. Zach is the main character who lip syncs the whole song. Some people may know that you and I shot a music video in this very house for yes. one of your songs. Uh, what was it called? Not About Love? Yes. Which is a song about what? <laughs> <laughs> Extraordinary Machine was nominated for the Grammy Award for Best Pop Vocal Album in 2006. After this album, Fiona took another seven-year hiatus, during which she worked on different projects. For example, in 2006, she recorded a cover of Sally's song for the special edition release of the soundtrack for The Nightmare Before Christmas. In 2009, Fiona covered the songs of Cy Coleman, Why Try to Change Me Now and I Walk a Little Faster. In 2010, Fiona released a song titled So Sleepy that was written by children involved with the non-profit organization 826LA that helps kids become better writers. In 2012, Fiona finally released her fourth album, called The Idler Wheel is Wiser Than the Driver of the Screw and Whipping Chords Will Serve You More Than Ropes Will Ever Do, on which Fiona blended different musical instruments like traditional drums and piano with unusual sounds, for instance the screams of children on the playground. Fiona came up with this title in a rush after having stayed up all night on deadline. She explained, quote, If you think about it, the driver of the screw has one job and he's always trying to change things. But the idler wheel is there and has this great effect on what the gears do. The idler wheel knows the machine much better than just this one thing that's performing this one task. For the second line, I had read about weeping chords in an nautical book that my last boyfriend had. I read that when ropes get frayed at sea, you can repair the frayed ends of the ropes with weeping cords that are very strong. This goes right back to the parenting thing. If I had a kid and I had a choice between teaching somebody how to avoid trouble or teaching them how to get out of it, I'd teach them how to get out of it." End quote. The music video for the lead single, Every Single Night, invites you to get a glimpse of how Fiona's brain works. In the Nightmare's dream sequence, Fiona wears an octopus on her head, has snails crawl all over her, finds a brain in her purse, and shares the bed with a man wearing a bull head. Fiona revealed, quote, I told Joey just to come up with a bunch of things and do things to me and put me in situations and surprise me. One thing I wanted to have happen was to be covered in snails. I laid in a bed of soil and they put snails all over me. And then they bought in shit that I would not have asked for. He put a dead squid on my head." End quote. For her video for the track Hot Knife, Fiona reunited with Paul Thomas Anderson and together they created a simple vintage looking video that features multiple split screenshots that help visualize the layered vocals of Fiona and her sister that joins her in the chorus. In the lyrics, Fiona compares two lovers in a relationship to butter and a hot knife. The Idler Wheel, again, wasn't left without a Grammy nomination for Best Alternative Album. 2012 was a bit of a messy year for Fiona. First, she was arrested for minor possession of hash and marijuana at a border stop in Texas. And secondly, she cancelled a series of South American tour dates because her dog was dying. It would take Fiona another eight years to make her unmatched album Fetch the Bolt Cutters. In 2013, Fiona made a haunting cover of a song Pure Imagination for a Chipotle ad and short film called The Scarecrow, which depicts a dystopian consumer culture. In 2014, Fiona wrote the opening theme for a Showtime series called The Affair. In 2016, she collaborated with Andrew Bird on his song Left Handed Kisses. Fiona Apple is no stranger to political activism. Prior to the 2017 Women's March, Fiona released a protest song against Donald Trump called Tiny Hands. We don't want your tiny hands anywhere near our underpants. 
In 2018, she performed with Shirley Manson at Girl School Festival, which celebrates female artists. They covered Leslie Gore's song You Don't Own Me. Fiona was seen wearing a shirt that said Neil Portnow. That same year, Grammy chief Neil Portnow was criticized after he said women need to step up if they wanted more nominations in the top categories. Fiona also released the single I Can't Wait to Meet You for the Lullaby Project, which pairs pregnant women and new mothers in hospitals, homeless shelters and prisons with professional musicians to record their music. In 2020, Fetch the Bolt Cutters was out, and it immediately became the album of the year. It brought a lot of comfort to people, especially during the pandemic, when everyone was revisiting their past experiences and relationships with people around them, and introspecting in general. There's so much stuff going on in the background of the tracks. Different bells, door slams, rattling and clattering sounds, chanting and dogs barking. It just feels like home. Fiona came up with a name for this album while watching a show. My housemate Zelda and I were watching the show The Fall, starring Gillian Anderson, and uh, we're just eating dinner watching a television show, and there's a scene where she was going to rescue uh, a young girl from where she thought was locked behind this door, and uh, they were supposed to wait for backup, and she just sort of throws away this line, and she says, touch the cutters," and I just shot from the couch, because I was like, this sounds, this is exactly what my, this is what my record's going to be called, and I, I wrote on the, on the chalkboard, I got a tattoo. <laughs> So this phrase acquired a new meaning. As Fiona said, quote, it's sort of fetch your tool of liberation, set yourself free, end quote. It's important to point out that beneath the track list on the back of the album cover, Fiona acknowledges indigenous territories on which this album was recorded. That idea belonged to Erin Weiss, a Native American activist. She and Fiona teamed up for an interview for Democracy Now!, where Erin talked about the issues Native Americans face during COVID and how you can help them. Erin and I have been talking about doing land acknowledgements. She wanted to start this project, which I think is amazingly smart, is that when artists go on tour, that they acknowledge the lands, the unceded lands that they're performing on and educate people about the, the tribes that lived on those territories. Fiona dedicated her lead single to her classmate from middle school named Shamika, who helped her stand up to bullies and realize she had potential. Fiona explained in a Vulture interview, quote, My middle school experience is still so important to me, mainly because there is where my relationship to women started getting fucked up. It's awful how many memories I have with a friend where a more popular girl says to that friend, okay, you can be friends with Fiona or you can be friends with me. Choose. And I never got chosen. Boys can be mean, but it's just kind of stupid mean. I'm not traumatized by boys bullying me. I'm more traumatized by girls rolling their eyes at me. End quote. Fiona did reconnect with Shamika due to her third grade teacher coming across her interview and reaching out to her. Shamika turned out to be a musician too, a rapper, and together with Fiona they collaborated on a song called Shamika Said. Moreover, Fiona released an animated video for the lead single, in which Shamika's voice can be heard at the very beginning, saying, Take a moment. Every song on this album tells a separate story. Ladies addresses women who have been cheated on. In most cases, women get mad at the mistress and not the guy, so Fiona tells women not to blame each other and not to allow men pit them against each other. Under the Table recounts a real fancy dinner with famous people that Fiona went to, but she wasn't afraid to voice her opinions. On the song for her, Fiona talks about the rape of a woman she knew. Another track, Heavy Balloons, has an evocative food metaphor for life, and I love how Fiona explained it. Quote, Strawberries and peas and beans all sound very uplifting and positive. Heavy balloon is describing the sadness, the depression. But then don't forget, even when it looks like I'm down and nothing's happening and nothing's growing, I'm growing. It might take some time, but I'm growing. Maybe you can't see it, but it's happening. End quote. Fetch the Bolt Cutters won Grammy for Best Alternative Music Album, and the single Shamika became Grammy winner for Best Rock Performance. Fiona decided not to attend the ceremony, though. I'm just not made for that kind of stuff anymore. I want to stay sober, and I can't do that sober. It doesn't feel safe to me to be in that kind of mm, exposure, scrutiny, comparison to people. Despite the fact that Fiona was pinned as crazy and unprofessional, just because she was a young girl trying to navigate fame and life in general, she's never made a bad album, and she's one of the best songwriters out there. She helped pave the way for a lot of new female artists that you see today. Every time I listen to her music, she reminds me that being sensitive is not a weakness, but your strongest virtue that helps you experience life. And most importantly, not having your shit together is okay. You had a photo shoot with Spin where you started chanting, there's no hope for women. I do remember that. Can you talk about that because it still feels that way? It's not that way. 
especially not that way now. And especially in the music business, there's lots of really, really wonderful musicians. And we're, look at my fucking t-shirt, man. Look at us standing up. Look at us. We're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. There's fucking hope. There's always hope for women. We are hope. We are the hope in the world. We are.